I shall survive using potions. Greetings, you sacks of spoiled goblin meat, and welcome to whatever this is, with an isekai this time. I'm here today with a stern message, a demand, that you read this light novel. Because if you don't, a swarm of angry bees will surge from your morning cup of coffee and sting your bum cheeks. And the worst part? You deserve it. But there's no need for fear or insect poison, because I'm here to save you from the terrible pain of bee-stung bum cheeks, by mostly just rambling about this isekai that I like. Don't you dare to click off. I already know where to send the bees, so pay attention or else. A what now? Let's make a few things clear. This series is not here because Kaoru is objectively the best girl in all of Isekai, but it helps. Bold statement, I know. But let me ask you this. Is your preferred Isekai Edgelord MC capable of literal war crimes while looking this darn cute and adorable? I didn't think so. The series is written by a pen name called Funa. He's a light novel author and has done three Isekai series as far as I'm aware one of which has been made into an anime. Didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? It's also really fun. <laughs> Funa has a preference for female protagonists in his novels. Most of Funa's works also share common traits, like the protagonist being cunning, Divine Link, MC being either friends with a god or thought to be god herself, and of course the isekai genre itself. He also likes the female leads to have sharp piercing eyes that make them look a bit scary, which I'm a huge fan of as it's my number one fetish, a uh, favorite visual design. Yeah, design. I personally really like this ongoing never fading trend of just isekai everywhere. But that's mostly because the seasonal anime cycle kidnapped me and I now have Stockholm Syndrome. Thanks a lot for poisoning, enhancing my taste, Japan. What's it about? I Shall Survive Using Potions is a light novel series focusing on Kaoru Nagase, who, to my amazement, was not delivered to Isekai by gentle and loving hands. Tires? Trunk Gun didn't take her is what I'm trying to say. That lazy good-for-nothing has been trying to avoid work and outsourcing to gods, accidents, and whatnots, instead of doing it by the true and tested method and driving over some folks. Instead of the correct way, Kaoru just stops existing. Just imagine this, you come from work and are exhausted as all hell and then you go poof because some divine entity did a minor aqua. And just like that, the world was robbed of the joy of seeing Kaoru stare people down with her cruel, slightly scary, and judging eyes. I mean, sparkling personality. I swear to anime gods that I have no bias whatsoever here. She's just better than anything you like. Gods, aqua, like incompetence aside, I think I'm being a bit unfair here towards this deity as no one deserves to be compared to Aqua, that's just cruel and uncalled for. Especially since he is actually deeply sorry for what he's done and does offer to make it up to the poor girl, by sending her to a brand new spanking world that's so much more exciting than her old world. Mostly because it's stuck at the times where antibiotics were definitely witchcraft, and anyone who spoke such nonsense like hygiene or progress should be utilized as fuel to keep the city nice and warm. Logic is also something mythical and definitely not worth thinking about. Funa has a habit of making non-story-related folks kinda a low spec. That does make it easier for the wise and noble Kaoru to extort, offer helpful advice for the dirty savages, fine citizens, for a modest fee, of course. Earth's guardian god's offer is accepted, but Kaoru, being the lovable gremlin she is, has some ideas in mind to ease her integration to this new world. After all, was she not robbed from her grueling and oppressive salaryman job with no real reason or warning? Surely she deserves compensation of some sort to help to find her feet. Earth's Guardian entirely understands this and does agree that maybe she could use some extra help to establish herself in the new world. 
He then passes Kaoru onwards to the goddess of Verni. Kaoru's new landlord is to be the goddess Celestine. And unlike the Earth Guardian, she has no interest in her followers and more or less left them to their own devices. She does take a bit more of an active role later on and evolves into, let's call it a Greek-style god, as she does like to punish her subjects with divine retribution. But, you know, with fewer bolts of lightning and more kettles, frying pans and other heavy objects. And for different reasons, it does take a brave person to call your literal goddess flat-chested, and it does take a petty deity to punish someone for it, but I guess even divine beings have insecurities. That aside, Celestine is a thirsty godly goblin and dreams of domesticating the Earth Guardian, so Kaoru takes advantage of this and they spend a delightful chatting session on how to lure him for kinky fun times in Celestine's dunk. I mean, tea party, where they can share their professional opinions on how to guide their worlds and maybe hold hands. After plotting how to invite Celestine Husbando for tea time, it's time for Kaoru's balanced and fair compensation package, and boy oh boy is it something. Kinda makes your standard isekai hero look like a helpless kitten in the middle of a house fire. Kaoru is granted the following perks. 1. One human body aged 15, immune to all negative status effects, poisons, and diseases. Kaoru should have probably thought this through when she requested this, as she is now immortal, a side effect she didn't want nor ask for, but in her defense she'd probably assume immortality was not given away like it was DVD extras that no one asked for. But hey, I'm not an all-knowing godlike entity that might also just be an advanced alien, so who am I to judge? 2. Every and all languages in Verney, including animals, because of course, what if you need to ask for directions from your horse? 3. Alright, this one is just bonkers. The ability to conjure any potion with any effect she can imagine. This alone is just beyond the scales of OP. But its second part is what scares me. It can be in any container made of anything that she likes, and in any shape as well. So, let's say Kaoru wanted a sword that would cut diamonds like it was paper. All she'd need to do is to conjure a potion. For example, mighty and powerful stamina restoration potion Isekai Red Bull, with a container that just happens to take the shape of a sword with a monomolecular blade. Yes, it is busted. Yes, it's gonna get abused. And for item number four, a literal pocket dimension to carry her loot, earning in. No self-respecting isekai protagonist wouldn't travel without dimensional sack or storage nowadays anyway. Let's recap a bit. We have a 15-year-old literal immortal being that can speak any language and can manifest weapons or anything she wishes for from the thin goddamn air. Oh, and then there are the potions that vary from Red Bull to the literal fountain of youth. I mean, Kaoru is lovable, and all just such a treat to read about, but it is a bit much. Almost forgot to say she has the world's goddess on literal speed dial. Oh my sweet, sweet Kaoru, you are gonna destroy the world someday, and probably by accident. But before Kaoru can descend to her new home, she's given a chance to say goodbye to her loved ones and friends by haunting their dreams. This was a really nice addition and is not often given to isekai characters. But it also reveals to us Kaoru's ultimate goal. You see that her intended goal in her new world is, and love that is real, to spread the Nagase clan's genes to a completely new world. I do love it when there's a simple and down-to-earth goal for our heroes. Why do I like this series so much? It sounds like your typical isekai power fantasy nonsense with every trope under the sun crammed in one story. And yes, that's exactly what it is. But it does make me smile from ear to ear when I read it. And is that not enough for a story that it just makes you smile?